Hello, I'm Bill Davis, the servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, and sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 tells us what the gospel is, how that Jesus died for our sins according to scripture. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Thank God. Amen. Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, set at liberty, then better bruised. Amen. The word is nigh thee, even in my heart, in my mouth, is the word of faith, which I preach. You will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved with the heart, man, believe it, believe it. <coughs> Pardon me. With the heart, man, believe it, and the righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Thank God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Well, I welcome everyone to this broadcast, wherever you are. Receiving it, welcome. God bless you. Have with me on the set, Terry Brown. Good morning, Terry. Good How morning, Doyle. I'm well, thank you. You're well. Ready to go. Ready to go. I uh, spoke to you earlier. I said, you know, Deuteronomy 28 says, uh, the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. I said, I believe God wants those first 14 verses read and we'll talk to them, uh, talk, to, talk about them some as we go. So why don't you read the first verse? All right. Deuteronomy chapter 28, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken dilig diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Is that not wild? That is. Hearken to the voice of God. Hearken to his voice to do all of his commandments that he commands. Everything, whatever he tells you. Hearken to that voice. I've been at that for more than 40 years. Actually, more than 44 years. It's a great blessing to have God teach me this. You know, it's really a beauty to see that if you will hearken to the voice of God to do his commandments, he'll set you on high above what? All nations, is that right? That's right, all nations of the earth. Right, did you know one person is a nation? One person is a nation. Did you know if you'll hearken diligently to the voice of God, whatever he commands you to do, he will exalt you, set you above every person in the earth. Now, you said, well, I don't need to be above everyone. Well, you need to be above everyone that stands against you. Every person that tries to resist you and stop you, you need to be above that person, exalted above that person. See, my friends... <coughs> <coughs> You have to take each person at a time, each 
person that's walking in a spirit that is a weapon against you, Romans 6, you need to be exalted above the spirits in that person. <clears throat> I'm overcoming a lot of spirits that I know. And I'm more than happy to be doing so. So, let's read the next verse, Terry, please. Verse 2, And all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. All these blessings that we're getting ready to read will come upon you, overtake you. Right? Right. That's what it says. Overtake you. They'll chase you down. Well, they will. <laughs> I enjoy teaching this. I guess you can notice that again. <clears throat> blessings will come up on you, overtake you. You say, what's that? That's a blessing. You need to be aware, um, alert, and see what's going on. Thank God. <clears throat> They'll come up on you and overtake you if. And then say if? If. If thou shalt hearken unto uh, the voice of the Lord thy God. Yeah. If. Notice there's an if there. If you will hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Next. Verse 3. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. <clears throat> you hear that? You're going to be blessed in the city, and you're going to be blessed in the field if you hearken to the voice of God to do all of his commandments. Oh, I love this. I'm <clears throat> really getting stirred. <clears throat> when I get on the front of my chair, you know I'm ready for anything. Hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and these blessings will come up on you and overtake you. Next. Verse 4. <clears throat> Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Look at that. The fruit of your body is going to be blessed. The fruit of your cattle going to be blessed. Fruit of your sheep going to be blessed. Everything will be blessed if you hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do his commandments. But you have to listen to him, not man. Listen to God, not man. In January 1971, I had a vision it's on my website, standing. It's about 10.30 at night, standing by. I was standing. I was lying down in bed, actually. But there I saw myself standing by shallow water, clear, full of brown pebbles. Up there about 10 or 12 feet, blue, clear line of demarcation. It went from clear to blue. I knew that blue water was deep. And the next day, I, I pondered it for 30 minutes or so, and then I went to sleep. The next day, about 11, I think it was, <clears throat> I was praying, and God told me that, or gave me the interpretation of that vision, that night vision. That was this. Uh, you're getting ready to enter into deep water over your head. If you look to the right or you look to the left or listen to any other voice except his, you're going to drown. Now, I didn't say it. That wasn't exactly the way the vision was. He said, don't look right, don't look left, and don't listen to any man. If you do, you're going to drown. So I said the same thing. 
And guess what? I am not drowned yet, and I'm not going to. How's that? Why? Because I hearken to the voice of God to do his commandments. What's next? Verse, verse 5, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Oh, I love that. You go to the grocery store, your ba basket is blessed. Really? Just have money to buy whatever you need. No, whatever you want. Whatever you want. And then look at this. Not only blessed in the basket, but blessed in the store. The storehouse. You know, I love Proverbs 8. It talks about God. I forgot the verse 8, 9, or 10. God leads us in paths of judgment paths of judgment so that we may inherit substance and fill your treasure. <coughs> <coughs> this is really fun. You have to believe that. I remember when my treasure, you couldn't even find it. <coughs> but not today. No way. I believe so in my heart about things, and there it's always there. Now, let me tell you, I pay attention to my money. I pay attention to what God is saying. I pay attention to my spirit. And I always know the condition of the finances of this ministry and my personal, always. No, I don't say, oh, God will take care of it. Yeah, of course. The God of this world will. What's next? Six? Could I throw a little comment here, too? Oh, sure. It says, bless shall thou be in thy basket. You said when you go to the store, that means, that sounds like to me, it's not dependent on having a coupon or a sale or a cheap buy. You're going to be blessed. I mean, if you go and there is one, thank God. But... You're blessed in your basket for obeying the voice of God, not for hitting a sale. Thank God. You're this right on. frugal over. spirit that hits everybody and they think they got to have a coupon or a sale or a bargain or a discount. God has blessed us. <laughs> That's right. With all the blessings of Amen. Abraham. Amen. Glory. Every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, doesn't the Ephesians say that? Amen. <laughs> I think you're getting happy. I'm getting over some of that frugal poverty <laughs> stuff in my heart, too. Oh, we'll do that, too. I'm believing I'm rich. <laughs> I don't understand those days for sure. Next. Verse 6. <clears throat> blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Is that great? No matter which way you're going, you're blessed. Thank God. I love this. I have to tell you something. One time... I was teaching this at a young man who used to play the piano here. And he was a good piano player. But he didn't believe 25 cents worth of anything. That's not much, you know that? And I got through teaching. He jumped up here, stepped up, and he said, those blessings are not for us. I said, Oh, they're not. No, they're not for us. I said, oh, yes, they are. No, they can't be. Well, aren't we blessed with the blessings of faithful Abraham? That wasn't Abraham before Moses. Where you been? He left, went to Word of Fake, and started playing the piano for Bob Hilton. I didn't miss him. What's next? Seven. Verse 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Ooh. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. I love this, you know. I love this. Smite your enemies. Thank God that come against you. 
They come at you one way, and they'll flee seven. Amazing. They get scattered. I see it happening all the time. I'm going to talk a little more. No, not yet. I'm going to talk right now. In the 04, God told me the power of darkness would come upon my ministry. Beginning in 04. And believe me, it came. My enemies came in like a flood. Like a flood. God raised up a standard. And that standard is Jesus Christ. You can read that in Isaiah somewhere, 40, 41. Anyway, God raised the standard up. And they couldn't do a thing against me. They just come at me every way, trying to stop me trying to bring me down, testifying to that fact that I was going to die, that they were bringing me down. I just kept on believing God. And I, I was saying I was a head, not the tail. We'll get there in a minute. But my enemies went that way, that way, that way. And you know what it says in Isaiah 41? You'll look for them and you can't find them. I'd like to know where that church, that church in Garland that was going to scrutinize me. <laughs> oh, it was written up in D Magazine by Paul Kicks. Now, Davidson is going to be under the scrutiny of a cult buster. Well, where did you go? Where did you go? And what cult are you in? And don't be bothered about where I'm at, this is not a cult. This is a body of Christ. Glory. Enemies went everywhere. What's the next? Verse 8. The Lord shall command the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Is that why? <laughs> he commands them, my boys. Commands them. Commands them. And they come upon us and overtake us. See, I, I don't claim it and name it. I don't even look for a blessing. No. I hearken to the voice of God and do His commandments. Whatever He commands me to do. I walk upright in the gospel, doing the will of God, serving God with my spirit in the gospel. And the blessings, he commands them, they catch up with me. They come up from behind. He commands them in all thou settest thine hand unto. That's all. right. Everything. Amazing. So, look, folks. Blessings are free. After you lay your life down <laughs> to do his commandments, hearken to his voice. He commands them to come. I love it how he commands blessings to come. I've got something to say steady to you and that. You seem to want to follow tradition of man. What the religious community of Africa has shown you. I have not taught you to follow tradition of man. Not at all. But to hearken to the voice of God to do his commandments and all of his blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Next. Verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Establish us himself a holy people. 
a holy people. Would you read that again? The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. I wanted to be sure I heard that. As he has sworn unto thee and us to walk after his commandments, hearken to his voice, do what he says, and you will be established to him, a holy people. Amen. Next. Verse 10, And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Is that cool? Did you know any person that can't see that this ministry walked for 10 years when they were saying, you're done, it's over, you're finished, you're dying, you're never going anywhere. Actually, it was eight years, from four to 12. The 12 things turned around. I overcame. I'll never forget it. I was walking in the fellowship hall. And it's about tax day, April of 12. I was walking in the fellowship hall, and I believe that God had told me to go back on radio. And... I did, and it was a war. It was a war, difficulty, very difficult to get it done. And I, I wouldn't say a word. Kathy D was praying with me every night, and we'd be over here praying. And I wouldn't say a word, but all I could hear, oh, thank you, Lord. All I could hear was, you're not supposed to be on radio. That's all I could hear. I wouldn't say it. I would not say it. Lord, forgive me for saying what I've been saying. Amen. There's a devil talking to me, and I knew it. And I said that was the devil. But forgive me for acknowledging what the devil was saying to me. <laughs> so, thank God. Uh, I wouldn't say a word. And walking and praying, and something broke loose in Kathy D. It broke loose in her. And when it did, I knew things were right. And God said, be still and know I'm God. I said, God, be still and know I'm God. Now I hear you. <laughs> I hear you, Lord. Amen. Guess what? I was still. And I overcame, we went on 30 radio stations. For one year, went off, got Roku, thank God, Roku. People signing up almost daily, getting on, subscribing to our Roku channel. It's a great blessing what God has done with this ministry. Four to 12, it was tough. 12 was tough, 13 was tough, 14's been tough, but guess what? Every day, God is adding to the ministry. Eight years, it was down and then leveled. But then, in 12, tax day, it started turning around. And it's been turning around ever, <clears throat> ever since. We got Africa back. Things are happening 
throughout the world. You see, you people, your tongues were set on fire. Rebel against me. You were wrong. Repent. I forgave you all the time. I didn't pay attention to you. God, pardon me, God knew because I was not moved by any of you. And I'm still the same way. What is the next verse? Verse 11. Yes. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Plenteous. Plenteous. Right. Fruit of thy body, ground, land, cattle. Right? Right. Thank God. Is that a blessing? Yeah. Hearken unto the voice of God. Do his commandments. He'll bless the fruit of your body, fruit of your cattle, fruit of your land. <clears throat> Amen. Thank God. Bless the Lord. 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 Bless the Lord, so. Bless the Lord, so. And forget not all of his benefits. Bless the Lord, so. And all that is within you. Bless his holy name. Who forgiven all of thy iniquity. Healeth all thy diseases. Redeemeth thy life from destruction. Crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Filleth thy mouth with good things. So that thy youth is renewed as the eagle. That's where I live. Thank God. I always like to add on the next verse, too. Verse 6 says, The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Are oh. you oppressed? Well, the Lord will execute righteousness and judgment for you. Excellent. Thank God. What's next in Deuteronomy 28? Uh, verse 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. Oh, my. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in a season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. You see that? The Lord will open what? Good treasure. Open huh? unto thee his good treasure. Amen. How you like that, folks? Open unto thee his good treasure. You know, God did that years ago. 96, pardon me, 86, God told me to start giving one half of my money away. I did. Given millions of dollars away and never asked for a penny. I haven't passed an offering plate since 96, the month of June. Amazing. And you know what? Happened the month of July, 96. God started me uh, flying on corporate jets out of McKinney Regional Airport. That's God. Open to you is good treasure. And that doesn't say if you live in America. Oh, thank you. Preach to them. Or if you have a good education. Preach to them. Or if you have a large clientele. Preach to them. <laughs> or whatever you fill in the blank you think you have to have to have his good treasure. He says he'll open unto thee his good treasure if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to do all his commandments. Right. And you know where his good treasure's at? It's in heaven. <clears throat> and you know you know how he opens a good pleasure, the good his good his treasure to you through people on earth. 
He makes sure they've got money or whatever you God wants you to have, and he'll cause them to give it to you. Well, that's right. You don't have to tell people what you need. Open that good drink. I love your preacher to Africa. Do you know that? <laughs> Next. Uh, one more thing. I just remember oh. your testimonies about, I believe it was the 70s, the oil crisis here in oh. the States, and it caused feed prices to increase. And so because of the feed prices with their... Uh, animals, horses right. and cattle, right. they would try and cut back on vet bills or any other way they could. Right. And your business never declined. You, your business, your blessing, your uh, treasure was not based upon the U.S. economy. Amen. That is really great. That's God. Of course it is. You wouldn't be up here. Uh, horse, uh, I was primarily doing horses. Uh, a lot of them, some good horse farms. And feed for horse, horse feed went from $3 average per 100 pounds to $10. And everybody was nervous. Not me. I just said, look, I'm just believing you, Lord. That's it. Obeying your commandments. And I'll tell you what. My income went up. Somebody asked me once when I quit passing the plate, offering plate, did it affect my offerings? I said, sure. Went up. Money went up. Because you were hearkening to obey the voice of God. That was it, right there. I had a job uh, where the workload kept increasing, increasing, increasing. And we were worshiping here every night, and I didn't want, and on Saturday afternoons, and I didn't want to miss worship. I knew God had appointed me for these worship services, right. and I didn't want to miss. And I knew mm -hmm. the workload increasing; that my hours would need to increase beyond just the full time every day, five days a week. So I sought the Lord on what I should do, and after a good bit of prayer, He told me to hire someone, happened to be my son, but I hired him, and God told me exactly how to do it. I, the way I was paid was not a salary, but I was paid a percentage of revenue, whether lot or little, I was paid a percentage. And so after God told me to hire my son, uh, well, he told me to pay him out of my percentage so it didn't cost the company any more money. Well, after I hired David, my money, I, I paid David, and the Lord told me. He told me how to split the work duties and exactly how to pay David. And after I paid David the remaining part, portion for me over the next two years, it just continued to increase. It increased between 25 and 30 percent over the next two years. It kept increasing. My last year there, I made more money, I made double than what I'd ever made in previous years when I was on salaries. Uh, and it was because I obeyed the direction of what God told me to do, coming to worship every night and hiring who he told me to hire, splitting the duties. But my money, even, even though I was paying a larger portion out, my, my personal take home just skyrocketed over the next two years. What year was that? That was um, 08, started in summer of 08, went through 09, and then end of February 10, God shut my portion down, had some changes in the company to where it was clear uh, for me to step out and give all the duties to David, and it was just through through all the details of planning it was clear that was what God wanted I stepped out two and a half months later he brought me in here to pray with you every day you overcame a lot I, eight much. nine ten huh? yes a lot <laughs> <laughs> glory be to God well we got I also got one more testimony sure, sure, about 
prosperity being dependent. This is really prevalent in America. I don't know about other countries, but it's dependent on having a good education. Yeah. I have four children. The first, my first son was not going to go to college. He didn't believe it was God, and he wanted to obey God. And right the early August, God said, actually out of your mouth, said he needs to go to college. Within, actually it was within about a week of the deadline, he got enrolled. The, the, you said it's in his heart what he needs to do. Right. The field he wanted to do, it was electrical engineering at UTA, one of the Dallas uh, colleges. That was the only engineering field that was offered there at that time. And, and that was the place he was going to go. Um, my daughter, one, and she'll tell you this, they'll all tell you these testimonies openly because God has blessed us for obedience. She wanted to go to college. She started in, went one semester, and it was not God. And she stopped. Well, I'll tell you, comparing the two of them, five years out of high school, five, six, seven years out of high school, they were making the same amount of money. I'm talking about five, six, seven years when Philip was out, five, six, seven years from the time Jenny was out. One with a college education in electrical engineering, one with no college education, well, one semester, but obeying God, uh, they were making the same amount of money. It was because of their obedience, how God led them and gave them jobs directed their steps, gave them jobs. I've seen the same thing in the next two sons. As they've obeyed God, God has prospered them and raised them up, up, up. It's, it's the obedience. It's not the education. Correct. And the three boys are part of the water by quartet. But more than that, they're the Brown brothers. <laughs> My daughter-in-law has a job in sales, and the company wants to tell her, you'll get sales doing this, this, and this, and you won't get them doing these things. And I said, baloney, you get sales because of believing the gospel. And she gets that in her heart and goes out, and she makes sales where she shouldn't make sales, according to the company. And we see this gospel prosperous all the time against the tradition of man. You're talking to Africa. Amen. Thank God. What's next? Are you through? I'm through. Okay. Well, the field is open. Verse 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Amen. You can... Read on my website. You can read all about me, whatever you want to. You can read blogs. They're all lies. Do what you want to. But when the power of darkness hit this ministry in Obor, early Obor, God told me it was coming. I walked through it all the way, never stopped. And I was ahead and not the tail. I was above and not beneath. While things took place, I got arrested for public intoxication, and I wasn't even in public when they arrested me. Oh, that they, it was. They took me outside. But they took you out in the public. They took me out. Yeah. I was so not in public. Yeah. That's right. But they took me out and arrested me outside. So it could be public intoxication. I paid the fine and laughed at them. Still do. Well, then, three months, a woman took a butcher knife and severed her 10 or 11 month old daughter's arms off, killed her. And the press went crazy. Everyone. Uh, district attorney lawyers wanted to blame me for the woman doing it. And 
They blame me for her stop taking her medication, and they still do, and that's slander, and that's a lie. But let me tell you, who did stop or, or let her stop taking medication? Child Protective Services. Yeah. Read all about it, folks. See what they tried to do to me. They asked me one day, a lawyer said, do you teach pluck your eye out? I said, nope, I sure don't, never have. But if God told me to, I would. If your hand offends you or whatever, cut it off. No, never have. If God told me, I would. Don't think I wouldn't. But you know what? God never let me do, teach those things because he knew what this woman was going to do. And this woman was a design of Satan to destroy my ministry and bring me down. And lawyers, district attorneys, everyone that cooperated. A, a plain old policeman God bless you. Uh, you need to repent. You testified under oath in the Slosser trial. You were a detective. You know you are. You interviewed me in my office, two of you. And you, you said under oath that I seem to have something to hide something I didn't want to tell. Well, Mr. Detective, I didn't know anything. And you were not going to manipulate me and get me to say something that didn't exist. And so you read it that I was trying to hide something from you. No way. Amen. And I was a head and not the tail. I was above and not beneath. And I walked right through it. They tried to destroy my ministry. Uh, a radio station, a local radio station, had a man on a station, uh, I think it was nightly. I'm sure it was, 9 p.m. And one night, he spent almost a whole hour lying about me. But let me tell you the best one. Oh, I he's love him. He's not around it. anymore, either. Huh? He's not around anymore. No, he, last I heard, he was northwest. But the best one was some guy, a talk show host. He said, I'm going to get that wacko preacher on here tomorrow on his talk show. Well, guess what? Something happened to him that night, and they were working, questioning him about something he had done or said, and this wacko preacher just kept preaching. And you want to know what? That talk show host lost his position. He was talk show host on one of the largest markets in America. That's true. Now he lost his contract. Now he's on a small little station, much smaller. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. So here's a wacko. You know, critics, enemies, bloggers look at this and they say, oh, that little place, look how many empty chairs there are. But just like you mentioned earlier, there's over 3,200 subscribers on Roku. Right. Well, when you subscribe, you can't keep subscribing. You know, it's not like a, a website you can keep hitting. I mean, once you subscribe, you're on. Right. Well, if you had everybody in this room or everybody in all the other states that know us subscribe, you don't get close to 3,000. That shows our ministry is far beyond... I mean, that's just one example right. of our ministry reaching far beyond these blue chairs. Yes. 
3,273 this morning. Just keep adding. See, people want the truth. They come to water by Roku live stream. And this is another example of not following traditional religion, the tradition of man for how religion or so-called church should be run. And look at the fruit that's growing up. I mean, look at the, the following on Roku and other places. But the fruit that's growing up here, look what has come about in the last two years. The ministers of music, the strength that it is growing it, to be able to minister, mm -hmm. the radio, the Kathy D and Kathy Mine ministering on radio uh, all over the country and the world. I mean, growing up strong. It's right. not about numbers. It's about fruit, teaching the truth. Obedience. Obedience. Hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do his commandments. Well, I think we probably... We've got one last verse. Oh, that's right. Let's read it. Verse 14. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. That's the key. You can, you can do all those things. But one day, you take a left-hand turn, you take a right-hand turn, go after another God, and everything stops. Everything stops. Amen. In the kingdom of God, it's grace for grace. Faith to faith. Strength to strength. Glory to glory. Honor to honor. That's water of life. That's my life. That's this ministry. That's what we do. I think Terry would like to do a song, wouldn't you? Terry Brown is going to come and minister a song that two Canadian friends wrote and sent to us, oh, I don't know, five months, four or five months ago. And I knew when we received it that she should sing it. Adam emailed it to her and said, what do you think of this? She said, I think I'm supposed to do that song. I said, I know you are. I know it's God. She's going to do that, this song. After that, whatever time we got, we have left, which I'm not sure of, we'll have recorded music ministered uh, by Water by Boys and recorded recordings of Terry Mai. Terry Brown, are you ready? Let's go. Oh. Is your mind confused and cluttered? Life has your back against the wall. Mercy's been there in the shadows Your heart won't let him in at all There's a cross of pain where Jesus bore the burden of your sin A place where dying deep inside New life wells up again He wants to ease your pain Eternal life you'll gain He's standing by your door That's what the cross is for Oh my friend, I've been where you are Lost in that cold and lonely place Mind is filled with such despair Pain is etched upon your face Listen, child, the answer is the cross you'll find Jesus there, it's true Oh, I too was lost, I've been set free He'll do the same for you He wants to ease your pain Eternal life you'll gain He's standing by your door that's what the cross is for. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You inhabit the praises of your people. Praise you. Bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus.
that God bless you all in Jesus' name. See you tomorrow. Noel Davidson, Plano. Good day. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.